when we have to fight so hard for something, it almost feels like the universe is telling us that's not meant for us. We're talking about friction today. I think it's good to constantly strive for more and like work hard and have certain goals and aspirations. But I also think that you can have all those goals and like lofty aspirations while accepting the place that you're at and realizing that where you're at is temporary. You don't have control over everything, right? When things start to go wrong, it kind of like, I don't know, it started to freak me out. So I feel like I've been keeping something from you guys and I just kind of want to talk to you about it now. I'm newly lactose intolerant and it's ruining my life. Okay, no, but actually about a month ago, I went to Yeem's Coffee, favorite coffee shop, suffered, got their like Vienna Black, which is a little cream top coffee, suffered, didn't know why. I was like, Maybe the caffeine is just too much for me. And then I had baked a pie, right? I like got really into my Claire Saffitz era. And so I was baking this key lime pie and it has like heavy cream and condensed milk. Suffered. And I was like, wow, I hope I didn't make other people sick. No, everyone was fine. It was just me. And so I was like, hmm, that's weird. And then cherry on top, I had pingsu with my friend, Brian from Singapore and my sister and went home and suffered and so I was like what's going on with my body right like all of a sudden I'm like hmm let's recount all the instances where my stomach hurt and you know what they had in common sugar and dairy so I have not been feeling well and I was like oh my god maybe I'm newly lactose intolerant right even tested it with pizza not good tested it with yogurt then not good. I am fully in denial of my new lactose intolerance. And so yesterday I was like finally accepting it. And I was like, you know what? I made fun of vegans before. I kind of shit on them, but I guess I'm going to have to just buy the vegan products now. Have vegan ice cream, buy the vegan cheese. Cause you all know that cheese is my favorite food, right? Like I obsessively eat cheese. Like honestly, that was 60% of my diet at one point like I would just make a cheese quesadilla for lunch or like have a bagel with cream cheese on it or have like cottage cheese for the protein and like I would just like sprinkle some cacao nibs and blueberries and honey and it was so yummy but then look at us now I'm like fully lactose intolerant tried all these vegan products yesterday had the vegan ice cream and I feel like shit today. I am so mother freaking nauseous. Y'all don't even understand. You know, like when you used to like sit in the back of the minivan and your dad would be driving all freaking crazy. And then you and your sister would look at each other and would go, I'm car sick. And then you would have to tell your parents, I'm car sick. And then we would have to like stop off on the side of the road. I am going through that in a stationary car right now. It's like we are parked in the mall, but I'm still extremely nauseous. So, so, that's what's been happening. That's the big news. It's ruining my life, genuinely. And so, I think I'm just going to go no, no vegan products. Honestly, I need to go get, like, a food sensitivity test and, like, an allergy panel and just, like, figure out what's going on. Because, yeah, I am, I can't live like this. Like, truly, it's not working for me. Well, it's just kind of annoying when I hang out with my friends and I'm like, sorry, I can't eat that. Oh, sorry, I have taste aversion to that. Like, oh, sorry. Like, all of a sudden, I'm the picky girl in the group and I hate that. And so, that's what's been happening. Other than that, we're talking about friction today. Because I feel like I'm causing friction in my life by just not accepting the lactose intolerance. This, on okay, honestly though, this initially came up because I was talking to one of my friends who lives in New York and... You know, they were just saying that they're in this era of not fighting everything in their lives, right? And I completely resonate with that. I feel like, especially post-grad, there was just a lot that I, like, didn't want to let go of, right? Like, I think that's when friendship was, like, maybe at its hardest because I didn't want to, like, lose out on the friendships that I had built during college, which is perfect and normal and 
like yeah you shouldn't do that right like you should invest into your friends but at the same time it's kind of like you know when you're like outgrowing certain friends and like you're just like fighting so hard for this friendship and like you come to a certain point where it's like is this worth fighting for like should it be this hard right like I'm reminded kind of of Diane's episode early on where we talked about breakups and she had said like you know I know that relationships are hard but are they supposed to be this hard and I apply that to my friendships in the same way of just like maybe when we were going to college together and seeing each other every day and like sharing classes together and you know having similar friend groups it made more sense for us to be like buddies and tight and you know like just be so close but there comes a certain point when in adulthood and like young adulthood especially post-grad it's like is it time for me to let go of this friendship because maybe we don't share the same values anymore maybe we don't share the same interests and you know whatever it may be and so I think that a lot of this has to do with just like acceptance right because when we have to fight so hard for something, it almost feels like the universe is telling us, like, that's not meant for us. And that's very hard to accept and admit, right? Of just, oh, maybe this friendship isn't serving me anymore in the ways that it used to. Or, you know, apply that to anything. Maybe this relationship, like romantic relationship, isn't serving me in the way that it used to, right? Because oftentimes I hear that if you are recounting on the early days of your relationship when things were good and oh like he or he she or they used to treat me so well and like I know that they love me because of like how our relationship started oftentimes they say that like once you start doing that when your entire relationship is kind of based off of the beginning they're like okay but what about present right you have to look at the person in front of you because people change grow and develop so much throughout their lifehood that a lot of relationships and relationships that work out is you two growing towards each other and with each other rather than growing apart right and I think about this with like my friends who have been in really long-term relationships right at my age my friends who have been dating since high school early college 10 years 10 years plus right even my other friends who like met their significant others in college you've been dating for six seven years and so I have seen firsthand examples of couples who grow towards each other where the person that we used to be is different and far gone honestly but the way that we have stayed the same and like are working together towards the same things allows for the relationship to still be intact and flourish whereas other couples right some may start to value different things some may have different like outside influences and so it makes it so that them and their partner are a bit more disconnected than they were at the very beginning at the very start of their relationship and so I think that you know all of this to say that accept the place in which you are now right like I think for me one of the biggest ways in which I was being unaccepting of myself was my career right like post-grad I had you know good jobs I had a stable career and a stable career trajectory and then there came a certain point where I was like I don't know if I envisioned my life in this corporate setting I envisioned my life talking to you guys and doing the podcast and like just like sharing our feelings and vulnerabilities with each other and I think I was fighting that for so long where it caused just so much friction in my life and it was like unnecessary friction because had I just accepted that this was the path that I wanted to take I think that you know in this like world the universe will kind of work around what you want right like I think that's the entire idea behind manifestation is put into the universe what you want and I think if you're like a good spirited 
person, you can kind of like channel that energy to work on your behalf. None of this is based off of anything I've read. I think these are just the feelings that I have. So I want to like, you know, just very much preface this by saying that like, these are my beliefs and just my thoughts. And, you know, I'm here to share them with you. But I don't know if I'm necessarily right. When it comes to how I was like behaving in my career, it was just like a lot of being like half into things and like half out, right? Because imagine like put yourself in my shoes and I'm sure you guys have examples of this as well where like if you're unsure about something working out and maybe there's a little bit of scarcity mentality and obviously fear because taking risks is scary, then like it makes it so that I guess like the universe doesn't know exactly what you want like you seem confused so I'm confused right it's like when you're going on a date with a guy and like they're wishy-washy about you so it makes me wishy-washy about them like the energy exchange goes back and forth right it's a two-way street and so same when it comes to just like friction and fighting things and where you're at and you know like I think it's good to constantly strive for more and like work hard and have certain goals and aspirations. Like I'm not saying don't do that, but I also think that you can have all those goals and like lofty aspirations while accepting the place that you're at and realizing that where you're at is temporary. Maybe the place that you're in in your career is like not something you ever imagined for yourself. Maybe it's something that like you thought isn't a good use of your education, you know, right? Like I have plenty of examples, me included, where like, right, we went and got a great education and like we decided not to go down that path. And like, I think that there can be a lot of shame in that, right? And a lot of shame in being like, I'm not using my degree. But I also think like that is proof that you can do anything you want, that like things don't really matter and you're not stuck in this one career path. And so when you accept the place that you're at as temporary because maybe that's not where you want to be or if it is if, if, if this is where you want to be and you want this to be your career forever like dude I'm very envious of you like I'm so envious of the people that know exactly what they want to do and like they go for it but I also think that there is like freedom and liberty in being like you know what the world is my freaking oyster I can do anything I want and I know and I have the confidence that I will make it work no matter what right I think that personally I have gotten to this place because I'm like no longer shy about the things that I'm passionate about it's no longer this like half in half out half ass thing where I'm like oh like yeah like I like him but you know here are my caveats like I'm just kind of like I like him and I accept where he's at or right career it's like you know what like I'm pursuing this creative venture and I don't know if it's gonna work out but I'm like so proud of myself for doing this. I am like full on for that because I'd rather you do that and pursue your passions if you're like not happy with where you're at in your career. And if you are happy with a nine to five and stability, like I'm like, yeah, go for that because right, we all have different values and needs. And this is where like knowing yourself is important because if you value stability, if you value, you know, having a schedule and a routine, I think that it is perfectly fine to want that for yourself. And then if you are not that way and are a bit more creative and, you know, are willing to, you know, put certain things like stability on the line, then like you go for that. I think it's just really about uh, taking what applies to you and not being shy about it when you're half in and half out at least for me like there was just like a lot of like shame attached to that of oh like yeah I'm pursuing this creative venture but I'm actually like really looking for a job and so just kind of like own it you know what I mean like who freaking cares nobody is thinking about you as much as you are thinking about you and so to an extent it's just like be proud of who you are and the place in which you you're at because this friction is just causing unnecessary like pain right and I think that personally I have just found a lot of joy and acceptance and when I hear like from my close friends that they are accepting of where they're at it like makes me so happy because I recognize that there's just less that they have to fight against right this idea of friction is that you're fighting 
who you are and where you're at and you're just not being accepting of yourself and I think that as much as we love those around us and meet them where they're at and love them unconditionally sometimes like we have to do that for the same we have to do the same for ourselves of recognizing that we are growing changing evolving humans who deserve the unconditional love that we have for others and i also think that this applies to maybe certain qualities of yourself that you don't love right so something that i think i used to have a lot of shame about was like being emotional right like the people around me would kind of like comment on it here and there like oh like it seems like you're really deeply affected by these certain things or um you know like when i would get into a discussion maybe an argument or two i would like feel really upset and feel like i would have to hide my emotions because i've been told before that i'm too emotional right and so i i think i covered a lot of like my emotionalness and shame of just like yeah why don't i have control of my emotions like why don't i feel stable like why am i so like up and down and you know i like can't really predict like how i'm gonna feel that day and you know i like used to cry a lot and i would like just reach these really really high highs and these really low lows and it was just like i felt insane like i felt like out of control and so i think that i have finally gotten to a point where and i have vocalized this before with you guys that i'm emotional and that's one of the things i really like about myself right like i think that purely came from letting go of the friction and just accepting like that's who i am and it's kind of cool that like i'm able to feel my emotions so deeply because i know people who don't right like i think that having the capacity to go so high and so low just like shows me that i'm like human and that i just feel things really deeply in my soul and you know that it points to like me being an empathetic individual and honestly that that's like kind of my superpower is that i'm able to connect with people on this like emotional level that maybe the people who don't have as high of highs and as low of lows right they have a very like kind of flatlined emotional spectrum and so maybe they have strengths in other ways but this is one way that i have i have i find strength in right like this is one of my strengths and so like you know i'm tr- i'm trying to like delve back into how i got to that place of accepting that i'm emotional and i think it was just realizing that like you don't have control over everything right like i think when you try to predict everything that's going to happen in your life and have a schedule and have need everything to go according to plan like i think that is beautiful in its own way but right when things start to go wrong it kind of like i don't know it started to freak me out like i remember right very specific events um it was like a music festival oh i'm getting stressed out on a music festival yeah because of the logistics of a music festival do you know how hard it is to coordinate a music festival like to make sure that everyone is getting their housing done and to figure out transportation and rides and food and snacks and alcohol and just like everything like that is so freaking difficult and so when it came to music festivals like i would get hella anxious your girl was just an anxious mess to the point where like i couldn't actually enjoy the music the festival like literally the entire reason i was there like i just like couldn't let go and i remember my friends being like hannah like we're having fun it's okay like you focus on like you having fun and that's when like everything clicked to me of like wow i really hold on tightly to my control you could say like maybe i was a control freak and it was freaking me out like yeah we got we need some people who are gonna match my freak sometimes but not when it's freak in a bad way and so i like from that point forward was like i really need to work on this and it's really about practicing and putting yourself in situations and practicing like i guess like how you're reacting to certain situations like don't go as planned and it becomes easier over time right like i think after that 
I practiced at the next festival I went to. I practiced during travel, right? When things don't go as planned, rather than, you know, having so much anxiety and kind of freaking out, it was like, okay, problem solving mode, right? Like, I kind of took on this new role of being like, okay, what do we need to do to make sure that we're okay now? And so I think that it became this kind of like beautiful, like growth of just recognizing the issue, first of all and then the acceptance, and then working on it, right? Like, we are all dynamic human beings who are capable of change, and like, right? Like, I think the podcast is the perfect example of this. I look back on past episodes, and I'm like, yo, what was I saying? Because I'm a different human now, and I have different opinions, and you know, that's the whole thing about like cancel culture is like, it makes it so that it's coming from this perspective of people can't change and they're not capable of growth, which I think is so wrong, right? Like one of the main things I look for in a human being and a partner is a growth mindset. And so if I'm looking for that, I know it exists out there. It's believing that you're capable of change. And so same when it comes to the friction, it's really about like letting things go. I think like something that has helped eternally is like one of the internet sayings literally it's not that serious like when people get so heated about certain things i'm like it's not that serious we're okay and of course like i take things seriously sometimes when they don't need to be taken seriously but i am human and so hopefully i like recognize the places in which i have fault and i am i maybe have weaknesses in certain ways but it's not that serious. It's okay, right? Like, we will get through it. And I think that really speaks to when people have a growth mentality and maybe don't have, like, black and white thinking. And so maybe this is a good time to share with you guys, like, a story of Fred Provolone. I don't think I've ever shared this on the podcast. If I have, you get to hear it again. But there was somebody that I had been seeing a while ago and in one conversation, I recognized that they don't have a growth mindset, that it was very like stagnant, like it was just so unattractive to me, okay? And so from the beginning, I had met this guy and off the bat, energy was really good. Like it just like felt very comfortable and we were just like trolling each other a bit. Like humor was just like, kind of there the goofiness was just kind of there and so I had seen him for a couple months and like it everything was going well everything was going as planned where right I I I I like being in serious relationships and I'm not really like I won't stick I'm not the type of girl to like stick around if I don't see you like in the long term, right? Like, of course, we have to get to a certain point where I can determine whether or not I see you in the long term. So it takes some dates. But like, once I see that, I like can't unsee it. And so with this guy, like, I was very much like, oh, okay, like we are going towards a good path. And then there came like one discussion where like things had gotten a little heated on his side where it was just like a bit of a misunderstanding and like communication thing but I was feeling like the tone in which he was speaking to me was not very respectful nor calm like you could say that his tone was calm like it's not like he like raised his voice at me but it was more so that it seemed like he was not treating me with respect like he thought that I was stupid and so we're having this discussion in a restaurant and I am not having a good time and so we end up like leaving the restaurant and it was kind of on a weird note like I think both of us just like felt weird there was like no resolution right and then we kind of like took the night and decided to process and so we hopped on a phone call And on that phone call, I had been explaining to him, like, you know, like, I totally get what you were saying, but I think it was just, like, the tone that I couldn't, like, get behind, where 
I think I just like need to be spoken to a bit gentler. And he had responded to me, oh, do you know how hard like I worked to get to this point? Like, and he had explained to me how he has worked on his tone quite a bit to like be a calm person. I think that like maybe he wasn't so calm in the past. And so he was like, yeah, I've worked so hard to get to this point. And so I don't think that it's that I don't want to speak to you in a gentler way. I don't think I can. And so I looked at him and I was like, or I didn't look at him because we're on a phone call. And so I responded and I was like, oh, okay. In my head, y'all know what was going on. I was going, oh my God, this guy doesn't have a growth mindset. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I think like honestly i need someone who is a bit more flexible in their thinking right like i was like calling him out of like oh you don't have a growth mindset and then he responds to me oh but i still think i have a growth mindset and i was like okay right like i'm like sure i'll give you that whatever and so that entire experience was just like so shocking for me because literally in the matter of 24 hours, I realized you're not my person. You don't have a growth mentality, then what are we doing here? Because I think that having a growth mindset like in- impacts every single part of your personality and how you go about life. And so when it comes to that guy, for those 24 hours that we hadn't talked and like, you know, we processed, I was kind of fighting my gut instinct. Like I was like, I really like this guy and like he, you know, seems serious and like he he had the things, right? But I think in my gut, I knew that this one thing was gonna affect the rest of the relationship and so I decided to not like fight that right I think like had I fought in that and had I gone against my gut like maybe I would be unhappy right now and so I'm like just proud of myself for like listening to my instincts right I think a lot of like the friction comes from when you know something is the right answer but you're like oh I'm gonna do it anyways and I'm totally a fan of learning learning lessons like I hope you all know during my dating era like I would literally be ranting to my friends and being being like you know I'm not I'm really not sure about this guy but I'm just gonna go on the date and at a certain point they started being like are you trying to learn a lesson and I'm like you know what yeah that's fine and so I think if you're in that phase, like, yeah, go learn some lessons and that's okay. Even recognizing that you have to learn a lesson and still going and learning that lesson, that's okay. Because, like, maybe we're curious individuals and maybe we have to burn and learn, right? Like, I'm totally someone who has to experience the thing and learn for myself. Like, I can't hear from other people. And so I'm totally on board for that. But I think at the end of the day, it comes back to like listen to your gut instincts you know what's best and I truly think that like building that like intuition listening is a muscle right like one of my friends Lauren has always spoken about how she's really her intuition is good and I think it's because she has worked on it time and time again and over the last like 10 years she has blossomed into this beautiful individual because she's able to listen to herself listen to her body and to her intuition at the end of the day, the day. and it, it really is a muscle and like right that might be like so woo woo and like just like not concrete but I think that like if you practice building the self-awareness and like listening and going into yourself that will eventually come. I think that's it for this episode. Hope y'all took something away from it. I'm happy that we get to catch up every week and I'm gonna go take some Pepto-Bismol because I'm still feeling a little nauseous. Mwah. Okay, I will talk to you guys next week. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, leave a review. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Share with your friends. Mwah, mwah, mwah.